Good morning. Good morning. We're going to start with our pre-service song, Oh How Good It Is. acceptance and love are the fruit of his presence here among us. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out his word till the whole earth sees. The Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence of his people. Oh, how good it is on this journey we share to rejoice with the happy and weep with those who mourn for the weak find strength, the afflicted find grace when we offer the blessing of belonging. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out his word till the whole earth sees. The Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence. good it is to embrace his command to prefer one another forgive as he forgives when we live as one we all share in the love of the son with the father and the spirit so we
every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into The Lord be with you. It's really true. It's all about Jesus. It's all about His Word for us. Not about our hearts. They're sinful. That's what Jeremiah says to the very core. But God in Christ, knowing our hearts, came to give us exactly what we need. The opportunity for confession and absolution, forgiveness and grace. Welcome into, uh, in the name of Jesus. This is Transfiguration Sunday. We take a little bit of a break, different color pyramids and uh, a different, different message than we're about to hear in the coming weeks. We'll uh, highlight that in the children's sermon a little bit later on. Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Come back at 12.15 or at 6.30 p.m. Imposition of ashes will be available. It's not mandatory, but it's a helpful reminder of our frailty and the shape of the cross gives us our hope. And there are soup suppers or soup lunches uh, before and after all those services, details in the eagle. In the atrium, stop and pick up our Lenten devotionals. For kids or families with kids, we have these calendars. You can take one of the options that's uh, there or you can pick up our devotional called Man of Sorrows, People of Joy. that will get you deeper into the Word, uh, maybe not in in place of the devotions you were already, I hope, doing, but in addition to. God bless your time in the Word. Our youth board has a lot of activities coming up in the next month. Uh, one of them is the Fish Fry. Some of you have been picking up uh, tickets, purchasing tickets from, for that at the table or from some of our youth. They also have, later on in March, a baked potato bar with a trivia time. And I understand that it's going to be very helpful and even pretty necessary to get a fairly exact number of how many people are coming for that baked potato bar. So if you wouldn't mind, please, over the next week or so, contact our youth board. You can tell them when you're picking up tickets. Uh, you can talk to Carolyn, Wenny, um, and some of the other youth board members. Let them know if you're coming to that so they can zero in on how much to prepare. We just had a nice time talking by Zoom with Hayden Rensner. She is in Czech Republic on our behalf, uh, bringing the good news about Jesus in conversation and teaching English. We'll pray for her this morning. And the next time that Hayden is a part of our uh, um, Sunday school hour, come and keep on listening. It was so good to have many of you there today. Jesus is, said, is revealed as the Son of God, the Lord, we would say, uh, in the transfiguration. But the voice from the bright cloud said to Peter, James, and John, he says to you and me, listen to him. We will listen to him. And that's why we come to him in confession and absolution. Stand with me, please, as we begin with those words of our baptism and confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all people. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. That we may enter into the holy presence of Christ, let us honestly confess our sins, that we may be made the righteousness of God. We confess to you, Almighty God, our blindness to your glory and our reluctance to seek your grace. We have sinned against you and our neighbors by our own fault in both our thoughtless actions as well as the good we have failed to do. For the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, forgive us. Renew our hearts, enliven us in spirit, and let us see your glorious mercy. St. Peter wrote, We have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will all do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in His glory. And bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. Transfiguration Sunday. Exodus 24 is our Old Testament reading. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people. And said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, 
Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. shepherd who finds us wayward as we are 
and gives us his searching, saving righteousness. Psalm 2 on page 6 in your bulletin. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. The epistle reading, 2 Peter chapter 1. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased, We ourselves heard this very voice, born from heaven, and we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Spirit. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kids, come up and join me please in the chancel. and We'll talk about what's about to change here in the church. Come on up and take your usual spots there on the step. I'll give you something by the end of children's sermon, something to take home, something to use, and to help tell the story of Lent. Keep a coming, Cohen. There's room. Spread out a little bit or make room in the front for people. Thank you, Ava. Well, boys and girls, would you say this picture looks Bright or boring? Boring. Yep, kind of thought so. You're right. Right now, kind of boring. Can you tell what word is on there? You see it, Nolan? Alleluia, right? Did you know that when you say that word, you know some Hebrew? That comes from the Old Testament. The people of the Old Testament would say, Alleluia, praise Yahweh. They were saying a great word of joy when they said that word. Do you see that word anywhere else in church besides on that piece of paper? Look, yep, thank you, Nolan. Very big on the altar. If you look over here behind Ava, it's over here on this banner. If you look, yep, exactly, Lydia, here on this part of the paraments. These are our Easter paraments that I asked the altar guild to put on today. We usually have white on transfiguration, but I asked them if they would please use the Easter one so that Alleluia was up there. But that's all about to change. Today it's white. Today, look back behind you. Well, not some of you can't see it, but there are flowers on the altar, aren't there? Beautiful flowers. Come Wednesday of this week, there won't be flowers on the altar. The color on the altar and the pulpit and all will be black. It'll be Ash Wednesday. And we will take this word, Alleluia, and we'll put it away. We're not going to say or sing this word in church for 40 plus days. When do you think we will bring this word back out, Jenna? On Easter Day, loud and clear, here in the Lord's house and in your house too. What I want you to do this morning, in a little while, as you go back to your seat, you're going to pick up one of these posters 
And everybody on church, there will be plenty of them out in the atrium on the welcome center where you can pick one up too and uh, color it brightly. I do some coloring sometimes, and I did this this past Friday. I took that, I made one of them look this way. You can do whatever you want to it. I made the other one look this way, a little bit different, but make it bright. Make it beautiful. Color it today. And then today, after you've colored it, I would suggest maybe roll it up. Maybe put a rubber band around it or a ribbon or something around it. Tape it shut, perhaps. Mom and Dad will help. And then tuck it away someplace. Maybe if you have a shelf in your living room or in your room, take this brightly colored alia. If you have a shelf in your room, go and put it up there on that all the way through Lent. And then on Easter, bring it out. You could also fold it up and put it in an envelope. But for the season of Lent, hide it a little bit. And then on Easter morning, Jenna's right, and everybody was right, that bring it back out. Maybe put it on your refrigerator. Maybe put it on your front door. Maybe put it on your mirror in your house. You'll see alleluias again here in the sanctuary. But not until then. Things are about to change. We're going to focus upon that we needed Jesus to die for us. We needed him to rise for us. And it's good for a while to put that away and then bring it back out. I want to teach you a song. Maybe you know it already. Ava, I'm going to grab this um, guitar from behind you. I'm going to plug this in. There you go. That was good enough. You were sitting on the cord and I didn't want you to get pulled over. Let me plug this in, and then I'll push the button that'll make it not pop. Here's a song. Simply, Alleluia. Again and again, you're going to say the word Alleluia. We want you to sing too. But we're going to change it in the second and the third verses. We're going to change it so that we say, Jesus is Lord, Alleluia. And then the third verse, we're going to say, listen to him, Alleluia. And we'll go back singing that after you get your... Uh, after you get your pages. But here's how the song goes. It's simply hallelujah. You learn it, and you learn it too. We say it again and again. It's a word of praise. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Because this will come up in the gospel lesson we're about to hear. Say, Jesus is Lord, Alleluia. Jesus is Lord, Alleluia. in the gospel you're about to hear listen to him hallelujah listen to him alleluia listen to him alleluia listen to him alleluia Listen to him, Alleluia. Lydia, I got a favor to ask. Would you help pass these out? You too, Ava. Make sure everybody gets one, then just put the extras here on the communion rail and go back to your seat still singing. Listen to him. Hallelujah. Everybody, when you've got a paper, you can go back. Let's stand with them, congregation, to get ready for the gospel lesson. Listen to him. 
Alleluia. Listen to him. Alleluia. Listen to him. Alleluia. Listen to him. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel. According to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one what the vision is until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. And together we confess the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Be seated. Jesus is Lord, and the Lord Almighty reigns. There's an endless song waiting to be sung with the voice of every tribe the sound of every tongue when the bride of christ on that day of days brings with joy unto the man a multitude of praise like the roar of mighty seas the rolls of thunder hear his people sing hallelujah hallelujah for the lord
feast, rest from battles won. Tell with great rejoicing all the wonders God has done. Like the roar of mighty seas, the roars of thunder, all the church will sing. Hallelujah. Christ we will proclaim Oh that more would share the pride salvation in his name Then greater will the anthem ring The mighty chorus rising to our King Hallelujah In the name of him who reigns, of all places, from a cross, grace, mercy, and peace to you. Amen. The gospel lesson, Mark, Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, is the text. Glory to glory. What a scene. Each year at the end of Epiphany, we get it painted for us with the words of the gospel writers. Three of the disciples get this marvelous privilege to go up the mountain on a hiking trip in a way with Jesus. They go up a high mountain, Matthew says. It's nighttime. It's been a long hike. They're tired. Jesus goes off to pray. The disciples go to sleep, understandably. And then they hear Jesus talking. Probably they assumed that he was talking uh, to his heavenly father in prayer, as he often did. But they realized that he is speaking with Moses and Elijah, prophets and saints of the Old Testament. And then in the midst of hearing that holy conversation, a conversation that Luke tells us is about Jesus' exodus. In the midst of that conversation, a bright cloud overshadows them, and the Lord Jesus is revealed to them in an even clearer way now as the Lord Almighty. His clothes and His face shine like the sun. And the disciples, understandably, are terrified and want to stay. They want to stay there. Peter's the one who so often in the scriptures steps up and is impetuously speaking. Lord, it's good that we are here. If you wish, I'll make three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And we will stay here on this glorious mountain where we get this glimpse of your nature, your glory. You are Lord. You and I are a lot like Peter. We want to stay on the mountaintops. 
We want to feel good. We enjoy the times that are sunshine and rainbows. We don't like to go down to the plain parts of life. We would rather tabernacle, tent, dwell for a time up on the top. We like the shining Jesus. We all do. But what we need is the bleeding Jesus. When Luke tells us, as he gives us the account of the transfiguration, when he tells us that they discussed, that's Jesus and Moses and Elijah, they discussed his exodus. That's the actual word in the Greek. They were talking about the cross that Jesus was in charge of as he was going toward Jerusalem. So here they are on this mount of glorious transfiguration, this glimpse of Jesus' glory and nature, and they're talking about another mountain. They're talking about greater glory that is a strange kind of glory. They speak of his exodus, his departure through the cross. We want the shining Jesus in our life, the power of Jesus, the majesty of Jesus, the peace of Jesus. And we get those things. But what we need is the bleeding Jesus, the Jesus of the redemption window. The Jesus who will not stay here on the Mount of Transfiguration, but will come down to the plain and then will go with his disciples to Jerusalem. But he will go alone. From this glorious Transfiguration mountain, he will go down with others. On that Mount of Calvary, he'll go alone. He'll be all of humanity, Israel and you and me, reduced down to one to bear the wrath of God, to carry it to complete it. When the voice from heaven says to the disciples, this is my beloved son, and then adds, listen to him. It certainly is an invitation. That's the way we were singing it, right? Listen to him. Hallelujah. But there was more packed into that. There was for Peter and for James and John a rebuke. And we need to hear the rebuke of the law at times when he says to us, listen to him. You see, Peter had been listening to Jesus just the week before. That's the time marker that we get from Matthew six days later. See, just the week before, Jesus had asked his disciples, who do people say I am? The disciples chime in. Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. But who do you say I am? And Peter spoke up that week before and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus affirms the answer, but then he says, and we're going to Jerusalem. We're going to Jerusalem and I, the son of man, will be suffering and I will die. And I will rise. And Peter, who thinks a lot like me and a lot like you, pulls Jesus aside and says, no, Lord, this can't be the plan. This won't happen to you. And in another rebuke, Jesus says, you don't have in mind the things of God. You have in mind the things of men. We like the shining Jesus. We want the Jesus of rainbows and sunlight, ease and prosperity. We all do. And it's not the Jesus that we need. We need the bleeding Jesus, the Jesus who will come down from the Mount of Transfiguration and will go alone to the glory of the cross, the strange, wonderful, mysterious glory of the cross, and he will bear the wrath of God. And we will listen to him. When he exposes our sin. Sometimes he'll put that word of law in the mouth of your children or in the mouth of your parents. 
Sometimes it'll be in the mouth and the teaching of your pastor. And sometimes it's your conscience. And always in the word, listen to him. When he exposes your sin, listen to him. And when you are driven to put no hope in yourself and to know that you have nothing to give God except your sin, listen to him. When he says, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as the ransom for many. And that that ransom is the payment for your many sins, for your lack of fear of God and love of neighbor. This Son of Man on the Mount of Transfiguration, but also alone on the Mount of Calvary. This son of man who's buried in your tomb and then comes forth, alleluia. Listen to him when he says to you, your sins are forgiven. We need to hear that. The marvelous truth of Transfiguration Sunday. And not forget where Jesus is heading. Up on the cross and through the grave. Sure, we want the shining Jesus, and sometimes it will seem that we get him, but maybe there will be long, long droughts when that is not where we find ourselves. That's not the Jesus that we're getting. We have crosses laid upon us, and they are heavy and hard. But they are all born under the grace and in the shadow of his cross that answers all of our sin. The disciples stand with Jesus up there on the Mount of Transfiguration at the end, now unafraid because they trust him. They listen to him and they will follow toward the cross. They will blow it and you will blow it many times and you will live. Live in the shadow of this cross that's the answer to all your death, all your sin. You need and you have the bleeding Jesus And the risen Jesus, even while you live here in the midst of the dust and the difficulties of life. Bo Geertz was a Lutheran pastor in Sweden, and he wrote a lot of great devotionals and a couple of great books that I find very helpful. But here's one of his prayers, a prayer he wrote based upon Transfiguration Sunday and is a very fitting way for us to go forth into the finish of Epiphany, the beginning of Lent. He prayed this way. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for every glimpse of your glory that I'm allowed to see and for all the joyous moments I've experienced in your presence, surrounded by your light. You know I would gladly live there with you and build myself a small tent. However, Because it's not your will. I thank you for sending me amid the heat and the dust and the anxiety and the struggle among men. You wander with me all the way. And I know that all your glory is here, encompassing me, even when I see only clouds and hard work and poor results. I thank you for the grace to be able to lift up my eyes and see only you. And know that where you are is where all God's glory is. And God's people say, Amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds safe in faith in Jesus Christ, your crucified Lord. Hallelujah. We worship the Lord with our offerings. Guests and visitors, we don't expect you to bring them an offering, but we ask that everybody would use one of those pew attendance cards and a prayer card too. Those are the yellow ones that I hope are in front of you and you can share with us how you'd like us to pray in petition or in praise along with you. To the Lord, our offerings.
Let each of our petitions in praise or thanks end with, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the baptized, that we would heed our Heavenly Father's admonition, His voice, to listen to His Son as He speaks to us through His holy word and sacraments, and that we would, by faith, behold Him in His glory as He continues to dwell among us, delivering forgiveness, life, and salvation through that same word and sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our congregation, and especially for our catechumens, our confirmation students, our Sunday school students, that as we behold the glory of God in the face of Jesus, we would be transfigured into his image And that we would be given boldness of spirit to share his glory abroad. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For families, the parents would teach the faith to their children. And that the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in all households. And for all expectant mothers that they and their babies would be kept safe and healthy throughout their pregnancies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who've been placed in authority, that they would serve with integrity and honor for the good of all and for our country, that division, conflict, and strife would give way to unity, peace, and quietness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who grieve with Christian hope, praying for Angie and Alex and Sidney Nelson, and giving thanks for the life and faith of Chad Nelson, for Betty Carter, his mother, and for their comfort in the midst of grief. Also for the family of Linda Kissel, the sister-in-law of Bob Brinkoff and sister of Janet, that the Lord would be their comfort in the midst of this valley of shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for those who are undergoing surgery soon or recovering, those who are sick in any way, for Jack Miller and Dennis Marksman, Thad Ganaust and Jim Feldhake, Rich Brillhart, Richard Ornestorge and Roberta Jenkins, for Dave Reagan, Betty Binker, Sarah Bernhard, for Heather Harbour and Justin Traub, Marlene Hake and Heather Davis, Tatum Garcia, Shirley Cheadle and Dan Chambers, and for these who in silence we name Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For Hayden Rensner, for her safety and her proclamation of the good news about Jesus in the Czech Republic, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord God, your power is beyond compare, your glory beyond understanding. Open our hearts to know you through the glory of your Son, whose saving will and purpose has rescued us from sin and death and made us your own people by baptism and faith. Hear us as we combine all of our prayers and petitions in praying the way that He has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. all you got to lean on but thank god it's all you need and all the people said amen whoa and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen if you're rich or poor
poor Well, it don't matter We are strong, you know Love is what we're after We're all broken But we're all in this together God knows we stumble and fall And he so loved the world He sent his son to save us all And all the people said amen Oh, and all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends And all the people said amen Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart Blessed are people said amen whoa and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen